Like all nations, Kenya has been founded on the efforts of many people, institutions, organizations, professions, corporations and companies. One of the companies that have helped build Kenya is KCB, which is today the country's largest and most successful bank, with a network of branches that extends into the neighboring countries of Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi and South Sudan. Though its origins go back to the 19th century, with the setting up in 1863 of the National Bank of India in Calcutta, India, KCB was inaugurated by President Jomo Kenyatta on November 12, 1970, after the Kenya government acquired 60% shares in the then National and Grindley's Bank. National and Grindley's had been operating in Kenya since 1958, when the National Bank of India merged with Grindley's Bank of Britain. In its early years, KCB faced a major challenge in persuading Kenyans to use its services. For decades, Africans had been denied the right to hold bank accounts, so they had developed the habit, particularly in the rural areas, of keeping their cash at home. But eventually, through the leadership of its first executive chairman, John Mishuki, Philip Ndegwa, George Saitoti and Benjamin Kipkorir, the bank became the main bank for Africans in Kenya. Indeed, by 1988, the bank's growth had outstripped that of any other bank in the country. KCB had the largest operating network with 241 banking outlets covering the entire country and it held 30% of the savings account deposits of all banks in Kenya. KCB would be the first Kenyan bank to install internet services for its business. And to ensure that the services ran smoothly, KCB trained most of the bank staff working in the computer operations at the KCB Leadership Center located at Karen, Nairobi. Soon after the June 1999 annual general meeting, KCB hired Gareth George, a former managing director of Barclays Bank, to become the bank's managing director. It was obvious that KCB's board and shareholders, who included the government, looked to George to work similar miracles at KCB. And at first it looked like George would indeed succeed in turning KCB around, soon after Nyakiamo retired as chairman in June 2001 and was replaced by Dr. Benjamin Kipkule, a former diplomat and former chairman of the Kenya Revenue Authority. Two months after Nyakiamo left, KCB surprisingly announced that it had made a pre-tax profit of 210 million Kenyan shillings during the first half of the year compared with the huge losses of 1.12 billion and 720 million shillings it had made in the same periods of 1999 and 2000 respectively. According to George, provision for bad debts had gone down to 1.1 billion Kenya shillings compared with the 2.4 billion in the same period the previous year. In the national general election held in December that year, Mwai Kibaki, a former vice president and finance minister running on the ticket of the National Alliance for Change, NARC Party, succeeded Moy as president following his victory over Kanu's presidential candidate, Uhuru Kenyatta. Kibaki's election would change the country's business environment, including banking. On taking over from Moy, Kibaki promised a raft of policy changes meant to improve the country's economy. The first was to drop the bank's cash ratio to 6%. Though this put billions of shillings into banks' vaults and offered a great opportunity for banks to grow their lending books cheaply, KCB was in no position to take advantage of the move. Its books were still in bad shape. In the six months ending June 2002, KCB had incurred a 1.2 billion shilling loss which cast doubt on George's much-hyped turnaround that had apparently seen the bank return a 210 million shilling profit for the first half of 2001. By September 2002, it was clear that George's efforts had hit the rocks. Indeed, on January 16, 2002, KCB Chairman Kip Kule announced that George had resigned from KCB. 
but whether he jumped or was pushed out was never made clear. 